Hello and good morning students. Good to see you in this 11th revision lecture. In this lecture, we are going to continue the topic that we have been learning in the last two revision lectures that is adverbs. In today's revision lecture, we are going to cover the final and the concluding part that we need to learn about adverbs which is adverbial phrases. Well, in your text you will find on page number 51 a fun task exercise given to you about circling the adverbs and adverbial phrases in each sentence and underlining the verb that adverb or adverb phrases modify. Well, to execute this exercise we need to have a proper understanding about what are adverbial phrases. So here I am to explain this topic in this revision lecture, lecture number 11. So let's get started without any delays. So as you see on the board, in a usual practice, I have put up and asked a question to myself, which you can ask to yourself as well. What is an adverbial phrase or an adverb phrase? Is it? So you can see on the board what is an adverbial phrase or an adverb phrase has been answered in a pointwise method over here, which I'm going to explain to you. So have a look at this at the board and see and try to understand using all your discrete intelligence. Well, the question what is an adverbial phrase or an adverb phrase can be defined in two different set of words which I have tried to explain over here. Let's read the first set of words. A prepositional phrase. Well, the moment you hear the word prepositional phrase, it should click to your mind that in class 7, you learned about prepositional phrase, isn't it? A preposition followed by the other words that make a set of words called as prepositional phrase. Well, to just recall about preposition, let me take up an example. If you say, I travelled to Delhi by car where you will find the word by by as a preposition and the words by car would give you the idea about prepositional phrase. Well, let's come to adverbial phrase. A prepositional phrase that modifies a verb, an adjective or an adverb is called an adverbial phrase. You see, it is greatly connected with the <coughs> learning of prepositional phrase. So, prepositional phrase that you already learned is related to that. A prepositional phrase that modifies a verb, an adjective or an adverb in a sentence is called an adverbial phrase. Well, let's try to make the definition even more simpler if possible. Reading the next set of words, an adverb phrase or an adverbial is a group of words that modify a verb, an adjective or perhaps a complete sentence. Well, this is the even simpler definition of what is an adverbial phrase or an adverb phrase. So I hope with the help of these two definitions and a bit of explanation, you must have got the clear idea about adverbial phrases. Well, <coughs> let's try to uh, answer or understand what is the role of an adverbial phrase. For this, we need to read this. Adverbials give us more information about a sentence by answering questions like where, when, why, how often, how long and how much. Well, these questions are answered by adverbials in order to give us information vested within the sentence. Well, this is not all. <coughs> I would like to add over here that on the basis of the type of information that these questions provide us like where, when, why, how often, how long, how much, etc. So, on the basis of the type of information that they give us, adverbials can further be classified, classified or divided into many categories. Well, so on the right side of the board, you can see over here, adverbial phrases have been put into five groups over here, as you can see, namely adverbials of place, adverbials of time, adverbials of manner, adverbials of reason and adverbials of frequency. I am quite sure you must be very <coughs> acquainted with these words. Adverb of manner, adverb of time, place, reason and frequency, which we learned in the earlier <coughs> section of this uh, revision lectures. 
Well, let us discuss each one of them in details and then understand adverbials of these things. I am not saying adverb, I am saying adverbials of these categories. To understand the first one, that is adverbials of place. We can say that adverbials of place uh, tell us about the place of action, where the action took place. Well, let's take one or two examples to understand adverbials of place. Well, if I write this sentence about an adverbial of place, an example to understand what are adverbials of place. I called him outside the mall. Well, if I take this first example over here, I called him outside the mall. You will be able to observe that the words outside is showing the adverb of place. Therefore, if I highlight or underline the words outside the mall, it would give me the understanding or the information about the sentence that where the person is being called. So, the word outside the mall is the adverbial of place that is mentioned in this sentence, which is modifying the action of calling someone at a particular place. You can say outside the mall is the adverbial of place or adverbial modifying the action of calling. So, you see over here in this example, a very simple one to understand about adverbial of place. Moving ahead to the next example of the similar type, the children were hiding beneath the table. Let's go ahead 
and discuss and understand about adverbial of time. Just as the adverbial of place used to tell us or told us about the place where the action took place. Similarly, the adverbial of time will tell us at what time or when the action was done by the verb. Let's see a few examples to understand this adverbial of time. A sentence, I have known him since last five years I have known him since last five years so what is the <coughs> adverbial phrase over here let's identify I have known you know somebody the action of knowing somebody that's the verb over here I have known him since last five years so if you underline the words since last five years will give you the idea about the time when you are knowing a person you've been knowing that person since last five years therefore the word since which plays the role of an adverb and indicates the time of you knowing someone that's modifying the verb in the sentence therefore the words since last five years can be highlighted, understood or taken as the adverbial phrase related to time. So it is the adverbial phrase of time. Second example about the adverbials of time. Seema has been deciding her presentation topic for five days. Another example. has been deciding a presentation topic for five days. So in this sentence too, you will acknowledge and see that the words for five days, just like we had the word since last five years, <coughs> tells us that it is an adverbial phrase related to time or answering the question when. Therefore, it modifies the verb of time that when she has been doing this. Seema has been deciding. So, deciding is the verb which it is relating to how long did she take to decide her presentation. She took five days to decide her presentation. Well, the next adverbial phrase that we will be discussing is the adverbial of manner. Well, the adverbial of manner tells us or informs us that how or in what manner or in what way the action has been performed or executed. Let us see three examples related to the adverbials of manner and understand better about it. Adverbial of manner The kids ran more slowly than before Well, in this sentence, you can see and acknowledge the words slowly, which is already giving you an indication about the adverb. The word slowly is an adverb. Therefore, the other words that come along with it, slowly than before, along with the word more, which is 
showing the comparison over here using the adverb slowly. The kids ran more slowly than before. Hence, by underlining the words more slowly than before would become my adverbial phrase of manner which indicates the manner or the way how the children or the kids ran. The action of running is being described over here. Therefore, the entire set of words more slowly than before, it modifies the action of running which is here in the past tense. The kids ran how? If I ask the question how? Then it will answer back or give me the answer in return more slowly than before. Then the usual time is to take to run. Therefore, the words more slowly than before becomes my adverbial of manner. Well, I hope this sentence is done. Two more sentences. Katie solved the equation more easily than her classmates. Well, in the sentence 2, you will find the <coughs> word easily, which is the adverb in the sentence, isn't it? You must be now true with the adverb, so easily you will be able to identify adverb. So, easily shows what? It shows the manner in which the sum was solved or the equation was solved. So, KT solved, the action of solving is being done by KT in an easy manner compared to her classmate. So, KT solved the equation. How did she solve the equation? And if I have to underline the necessary words, I will be underlining more easily than her classmates, which would here refer to the adverbial of manner. Well, it becomes the adverbial phrase of manner, which is modifying the verb solved. Another example. Time flies very quickly. Well, so in this sentence too, you will find the verb flies, which is getting modified with the word very quickly. And where the word quickly is the adverb, the adverb of man. Therefore, if we underline the words very quickly, it would refer to us or tell us that it is the adverbial of manner, the adverbial phrase of manner, which is modifying the manner in which the time is passing by or flying away. Therefore, the words very quickly becomes the adverbial phrase of the type manner. Moving ahead to the understanding of the next adverbial phrase, that is adverbial of reason. Well, the word itself must be telling you reason, adverbial of reason will give you the reason behind an action why the reason happened which could be answered with the words because, as, so isn't it? so adverbial of reason gives the reason behind an action let us see a few examples so that gets clear to us adverbial of reason He could attend the party as he could not attend the party as his daughter was sick. Let's write it down. Let's analyze the sentence and see about what is given to us. He could not attend the party as his daughter was sick. So, if you carefully observe the words, a reason is being given over here. That 
why the person was not able to attend the party so what is the question being replied over here why so as we learned over here where when why so when we have the word why answering our question that part of the sentence or that part will become the adverbial phrase of reason he could not attend the party why he could not attend the party let me underline the words as his daughter was sick so these words which i underlined as his daughter was sick becomes my adverbial phrase of reason where i ask the question why that action could not happen that is attending the party attend is the action doing word verb which is being modified by the words as his daughter was sick giving a reason which is finally as understood as the adverbial phrase of reason <clears throat> let us see another example felix was not allowed to attend the lecture because he was late felix was not allowed she visited me regularly at the hospital so how do you can say this she visited me 
regularly at the hospital you will easily be able to catch up with the word that is regularly ending with the word the letters ly which will give you a clear indication that this is an adverb so the words she is the subject the noun she visited visited is the action so here the action is being uh, modified or is being modified by the word regularly which is showing how many times or how many number of times the person has visited or not visited well here it is about visiting it's not about not visiting so we have the positive sense she visited how many times did she visit so again we have the question that we have just learned how often how long how much etc so how many how many times did she visit so she visited me regularly at the hospital so underlining the words regularly at the hospital would give us our necessary adverbial phrase of frequency to show how many number of times the action of visiting has taken place the next example jane practiced daily for the dance competition Here in this sentence, Jane is doing the practice of dancing. Dance practice. Jane practiced. How long did she practice? How many times did she practice? How much did she practice? Is it it? So she practiced daily. So we are asking about a particular number of days over here. Therefore, the word daily for the dance practice, where you will find these words as the adverbial phrase of frequency. Let's underline the words. important to learn about the adverbial phrase and how to pick them out so the words daily for the dance competition becomes the adverbial phrase of frequency that we need to understand third and last example we visit our relatives usually in the weekend so concentrate on those words as well we visit our relatives usually in the weekend so again the question can be rightfully asked over here we visit our relatives when do you visit your relatives okay so you will visit your relatives usually how many times you use it well rather than asking when you will say how many times or how often do you visit your relatives so the word how often is suitably connected with this one we visit our relatives usually in the weekend so <coughs> underlying the words usually in the weekend would provide or give us the understanding about the adverbial of adverbial phrase of frequency so i hope the understanding about the adverbials or the adverbial phrase is now clear to you let us move ahead and look into page number 51 where we have an exercise to solve circle the adverbs and adverbial phrases in each underline the verb that the adverb or the adverb phrase is modified well not going by the instruction we will be doing this we will be following this but we will not be circling or underlining instead we will be doing a tabular way of writing where we will be writing in a tabular form the adverb the adverbial phrase or the verb that it is modifying so let's get started with this exercise
So here is the board all set for us to practice the exercise given to us on page 51, the fun task exercise. Let's do it together. Circle the adverbs and adverbial phrases in each sentence. Underline the verb that the adverb or adverb phrase modifies. Well, let's do it. I put up the even number of sentences over here, the even number which came across and left the odd number for you to practice. Well, let's put this together. 2 to 14. The contented cat purred loudly. Carefully reading this, you will find and analyze that we have the determiner, the beginning of the sentence, contented cat. So the word contented is describing the noun cat, which becomes the adjective of the cat. Well, further reading the sentence, you will find the word purred, the sound made by the cat. So it becomes the verb and finally the word loudly will further be enhancing or describing or telling us something more or adding to the meaning of the action purred. So we can say in what manner the cat purred loudly. So I can say and circle the adverb loudly and further I can circle the adverb in phrase. So I can say the entire phrase purred loudly is the adverbial phrase given to me in the sentence. Well, what is it modifying? It is modifying the verb per over here. So I can say that the verb is underline the verb that the adverb or adverb phrase modifies. So I can underline the word per over here which becomes my verb. Well, a lot of information therefore we will write it on the board, the adjacent side. <coughs> Adverbs, we have the word loudly which is the adverb in the given sentence we have the adverbial phrase heard loudly and we have the verb which it is modifying or telling us more about is heard the next sentence Andrea happily sang her favorite song. So the action of singing is being added with the meaning of the word happily. So we can say the word happily is an adverb of manner. Hence, we will be circling the adverb and, and we will be circling the adverbial phrase which is happily sang. Well, it is modifying the verb sang, so we will be underlining the verb sang. So let's write the information on the other side of the board. The adverb happily. We have the adverbial phrase happily sang. And finally, we have the verb or the adverb which it modifies. So here it is the verb. The action of singing in the past tense, sang. The next sentence, number six. We ate a picnic lunch outside. So, the word outside gives you the idea about where the lunch was eaten or the action of eating was done. Well, therefore, you can say the word outside is the adverb in this sentence. It is an adverb of place. But we need to circle the adverbial phrase over here as well. So we will be having the adverb phrase along with the word ate over here. So ate a lunch, ate a picnic lunch outside will become our adverbial phrase which is modifying the action of eating. Where was the eating done? Outside. So ate is the verb which is in the past and it is being modified or added by the meaning outside over here. So, ate a picnic lunch outside is our adverbial phrase and we have to underline the word ate as our verb which it is modifying. Let's write the information. Outside as our adverb. The words ate a picnic lunch outside as the adverbial phrase and we have the word <coughs> the word ate as the verb which it is 
modify number 8 <coughs> the teacher smiled at her students encouragingly well properly if you analyze the sentence you will definitely get the word encouragingly in your <coughs> understanding as it is the adverb what kind of adverb it is in the manner the teacher smiled so the action is smiling smiled at her students encouragingly so let's circle the word encouragingly and acknowledge it as the adverb and the words smile at her students along with the word encouragingly as the word adverbial phrase and the word smile which is <coughs> the verb being modified over here let us write the information on the side of the board the adverb encouragingly we have the word smile at her students encouragingly as the adverbial phrase we have the verb to be written as smile the next one number 10 have you seen my notebook anywhere well look at it carefully have you seen my notebook anywhere a question being asked in interrogative sentence unlike the other declarative sentences so you need to be a little careful to pick out the adverb as well as the verb it is modified well if you carefully see the word anywhere itself contains the word where over here and the word anywhere tells you about the place or asking a question related to place so the action of seeing over here but have you seen my notebook anywhere so here we are referring to the verb have have is the auxiliary verb that is being referred to have you seen my notebook anywhere so anywhere becomes the adverb which we need to circle up and for the adverbial phrase we need to circle the words have you seen anywhere well these words would compile to become the adverbial phrase where we have the verb along with the adverb so have you seen connected with the verb the adverb <coughs> anywhere have you seen anywhere will become the adverbial phrase let's underline the verb in the sentence over here so we will be underlining the verb have the action of <coughs> doing something or being in its being have you seen so have will be our first auxiliary verb or acting as a main verb over here so we will write the <coughs> answer on the other side of the board we have the word anywhere this is the adverb we have the words anywhere have you seen anywhere and the word anywhere as the adverb with phrase and finally we have the word have which it is modifying anywhere have you seen so have is the verb that it is modifying the next one number 12 the postal worker brought me a letter yesterday well here you can see that the information or the thing that is being sort of said about is related to time yesterday isn't it the postal worker brought brought is the action doing word if you analyze the parts of the sentence brought me a letter when yesterday so you will quickly be able to identify the word yesterday as the adverb of time therefore we will be having an adverbial of time inside this sentence brought me a letter would be the adverbial of the adverbial phrase of time brought me a letter so let's circle the words brought me along with the word brought 
and we'll be having the verb, the action of bringing. So brought will become the verb that it is modifying in this sentence. Let us write it out. Yesterday, the adverb brought me a letter yesterday, which is the adverbial phrase of time, and finally we have the verb which it is modifying brought. This is in the past. I think this should be clear now. The last number 14. <clears throat> My aunt sat there. Aunt sat there. Well, in this sentence, you can carefully see. My aunt sat there, where the word there is showing the place where the aunt is. So, rightfully, you can ask the question, where did your aunt sit? My aunt sat there. Sat, which is the past tense of the verb sit, which also indicates the verb that the word there is modified. So, eventually, you will be able to figure out that the word there is nothing else but the adverb in this sentence. And to identify the adverbial phrase, we will simply be circling sat there. Isn't it? So, sat there becomes my adverbial phrase and the word there becomes the adverb. Along with that, the word sat which it is modifying is the required verb in this sentence. Let's put up the information on the board, on the other side of the board. There is the adverb. Sat there is the adverbial phrase. And sat is the verb. So I hope these sentences help you to understand the exercise given in the front task. The other sentence you should be able to do by yourself now. This was all about the adverbs and the adverbial phrases that we had to learn in this lecture. See you soon in the upcoming lecture. Till then, have a nice day. Goodbye. Take care. See you soon.